From the largest ancient native cave artwork found in Alabama to how black holes sound. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. This week, scientists have revealed the largest ancient Native American cave artwork inscribed in Alabama using 3D photogrammetry. The cave is known in scientific literature as the 19th unnamed cave. Its real name has been kept hidden to protect the artwork. Scientists have found numerous sketches on the walls and ceilings of the cave. While the etchings on the wall could not be dated, researchers were able to date the carbon left behind by torches carried by the artist. They show the art in caves was created approximately 1200 to 1700 years ago. Pottery shards have also been found on the cave floor and they have been dated to between 1000 and 3000 years ago. Using LED lights, a digital camera and a photo rig that allowed 3D photogrammetry, a technique that involves combining overlapping photographs to add more information to a picture, the team was able to capture the hidden features on the Earth's surface. They created a 3D virtual map of the cave. The etchings included representations of people engaged in various activities, with many of the images life-size. The researchers suggest that the art in the cave represents the largest known example of cave art in North America and is comparable to the rock art generally seen only in the American Southwest. Also this week, a study suggests that water and ice found on moon may be a result of hydrogen and oxygen ions escaping from the Earth's upper atmosphere and combining in the lunar surface. The work adds to a growing body of research about water at the moon's north and south poles. Finding water is key to the planned long-term human presence on the moon. The new research estimates the moon's polar regions could hold up to 3,500 cubic kilometers or more of surface permafrost or subsurface liquid water created from ions that escaped the Earth's atmosphere. The presence of moon in magnetosphere's tail, called the magnetotail, temporarily affects some of the Earth's magnetic field lines, those that are broken and which simply trail off into space for many thousands of miles. Not all of Earth's field lines are attached to the planet at both ends. Some have only one attachment point. Think of each of these as a thread tethered to a pole on a windy day. The moon's presence in the magneto tail causes some of these broken field lines to reconnect with their opposing broken counterpart. When that happens, hydrogen and oxygen ions that had escaped Earth rush to those reconnected field lines and are accelerated back towards Earth. The researchers suggest that many of those returning ions hit the passing moon, which has no magnetosphere of its own to repel them. The ions then combine to form the lunar permafrost. Some of that, through geological and other processes, such as asteroid impacts, is driven below the surface where it can become liquid water. Meanwhile, scientists have identified specific groups of gut microbes that could increase or decrease someone's risk of suffering the most common type of stroke. The research adds to the growing evidence that alterations in the microbiome living in our gut could play a role in cardiovascular disease. Previous studies have suggested that certain microbes may influence the formation of plaques in the arteries and that the gut microbiomes of stroke patients differ from those of healthy people. To investigate whether they may also influence people's recovery from stroke, researchers took stool samples from 89 people who had very recently suffered from an isochemic stroke where blood clots blocks the flow of oxygen to the brain as well as from healthy individuals. They performed DNA sequencing to identify the different microorganisms present in their guts and whether certain groups of bacteria correlated with their functional recovery. Meanwhile, NASA has released a sound clip of what a black hole sounds like.
The black hole in question is at the center of the Perseus galaxy cluster. Since 2003, the black hole at the center of this Perseus galaxy cluster has been associated with sound. This is because astronomers discovered that pressure waves sent out by the black hole caused ripples in the cluster's hot gas that could be translated into sound notes, one that humans cannot hear. Now, a new sonification brings more notes to the black hole. The sonification revisits the actual sound waves discovered in data from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The popular misconception that there is no sound in space originates with the fact that most of space is essentially a vacuum, providing no medium for sound waves to propagate. A galaxy cluster, on the other hand, has copious amounts of gas that envelops the hundreds or even thousands of galaxies within it, providing a medium for the sound waves to travel. In this new sonification of Perseus, the sound waves astronomers previously identified were extracted and made audible for the first time. The signals were resynthesized into the range of human hearing. The radar-like scan around the image allows you to hear the waves emitted in different directions. In the visual image of these data, blue and purple both show X-ray data captured by Chandra. That's all for this week. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.